time to stop assembly line education. We see how public schools work, simply passing a child along without providing the skills they need to become successful adults. It's a system that's set up more for the adults than the children in the classroom. The discussion should not be about adult-centered issues. It should be about what we're doing to prepare our children for a 21st century economy. Here in the U.S., we spend millions of dollars on public education, but the results are leaving our students not at the top of the industrialized world, but somewhere in the middle and steady tumbling downward. In 2009, a study by McKinsey and Company showed the United States is 25th in math scores behind countries like Iceland and Hungary and 24th in science scores. I think what the report would say to, the, to U.S. systems in general is really focus on setting world-class standards in English, uh, in English math and science, uh, really focus on strengthening your human capital, who you recruit into teaching, how you develop them. The same study found shortfalls in academic achievement have tragic consequences for students such as lower earnings, poor health, and higher rates of incarceration. If the U.S. Um, invests in education, gets the policy set right in education, and educated all its people to world-class standards, uh, the U.S. economy would continue to lead the world. Uh, growth rates would be significantly higher than what they are currently. Uh, income distribution would be broader. Uh, the wealth of the country would be better shared. Uh, and America would thrive in the 21st century. That's what's at stake. Right now, most of the money for public education is not being spent in the classroom. If you say, well, yeah, the teachers get to spend 85% of the budget and the rest is left for uh, facilities and uh, 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 support systems uh, uh, and, and if administration is 30% uh, of the budget uh, and then you have uh, 3,000 students per school system with all the support structures, yeah, how much money is available to spend on the student? on making sure that they get good instruction. Where's the money? Where is the money? Save our children! Give up the money! Where's the cash? We need it fast! The money needs to go where it will lead to improved learning by students. Unions say they want the same thing, but take note how labor organizations tie their demands to the education of children. Michigan's Wayne Westland School District is a blue-collar community near Detroit. Four days, teachers went on strike in 2008. In video Today marks the fourth day that the teachers have been on the picket line instead of the classroom. Stephen Beecher was on the school board during the strike. He was also a teacher in the district and served as the local union's president. They did a pretty good job of... of uh, bulldozing the people into thinking that their whole strike and the whole issue was on class size, and it really wasn't. Uh, they didn't get their class size back the way it was when I was union president. For a third straight day, teachers and a handful of students marched in front of John Glenn High School. The teachers, feeling more confident in their stand against the district, following a school board meeting where hundreds of people showed their support of the teachers' effort. It's going to put a lot of pressure on our Board of Education and the superintendent to say, this community is backing this union. we got to help them. In Michigan, labor unions have the right to strike, except the teachers' union. It's illegal. Internal union emails from previous contract negotiations show the union actually bargained to increase class sizes. The real reason for the strike? They had a strike fund with, with millions and millions of dollars on it, and there were some people up in Lansing who were saying, why are we contributing this money? Why do we still have this money in the strike fund if no one's ever going to strike? And I think that was one of the, the reasons that uh, the Wayne Westline teachers walked. They decided they wanted to flex their muscle and show that they could do it. They could call a strike. And that's what they did. In Illinois, the union didn't try to disguise why they were on strike. In the Prairie Hill School District, just south of Chicago, according to district officials, the union was asking for a 7.5% increase over the next two years. The school district only offered 3.5%. The strike was on. In Illinois, union leader Ken Swanson speaks out against the system. Obviously, we're very disappointed here in Springfield. We're angry, we're bitter, terrible, awful, rotten. Swanson's main concern here, the pension system. 
and this is why. A study by the Foundation for Educational Choice and the Manhattan Institute shows the pension system in most states, including Michigan, Indiana, and especially Illinois, are dangerously underfunded. John Boyle is a former Ford vice president who handled pension plans and is currently a consultant and a math professor at Eastern Michigan University. The bottom line is they didn't fund the benefits. That's the bottom line. Now, if they're going to tell me what the cost of teachers is, then they need to tell me what the cost of teachers is, including the benefits, including proper funding for pensions and health care, and the state has not done that. Pension costs soar for the big three U.S. automakers. They had to ask their unions for retiree concessions. Pension costs are also high for many school districts. It would be interesting to understand what the taxpayers of Michigan are on the hook for because there's no backing off on this. You've made the commitment to people and we don't even know what our liabilities are. Remember how auto workers used to have the Cadillac of health insurance? Now it's the teachers unions. There's nothing to compare to it in the private sector. Absolutely nothing. There's very little, if any, co-pays, very little, if any, deductibles, very little, if any, teacher contributions. The average cost uh, per, per person is $1,800 per month going up, and the average cost in the private sector is under 900 It's less than half. No copay and plenty of coverage for things like Viagra and massages. Let's have some transparency here. Let's tell the people that are working that would be lucky to get a massage once a year that the teachers can get massages. Let's tell people that don't have health care or who pay hundreds and thousands of dollars a year for their health care that the teachers have health care basically free and that they have health care that covers virtually anything and everything without any expense to the teachers. In Indiana, a lack of experienced oversight led to disaster for the teachers' union's health plan. Thousands of teachers and their families use ISTA's health and long-term disability insurance. But because of investments that have gone south due to the economic downturn, the insurance fund is now millions of dollars in debt. We have many great teachers in our state who were really victimized. Uh, by what happened. We had teachers who at one time were told they weren't going to get disability benefits. And, and that's, that's unfortunate because many of these folks are, are people who served Indiana children incredibly well. So it was, it was a very unfortunate situation for Indiana teachers, but um, it, it always comes back to the fact that we have to keep the focus on the kids. And that's a situation where I, I believe that um, I believe that a structure lost its vision and lost its way because the interest was much more on representing adults than on doing what's best for children. The ISTA leaders, staff, and even the board of directors declined to sit down and discuss the scandal. To help fix the problem, the group has increased dues on its members. Another union-based insurance program is the Michigan Education Special Services Association, or MESA. Its parent is the Michigan Education Association. Frank Webster was the executive director of MESA. They're joined at the hip. Uh, the, the MEA would not exist were it not for MESA. MESA is the glue, as I like to say, that holds the MEA together. Uh, the MAA would not exist if it weren't for MESA because the MAA goes out and tells the members that the reason we are here and the reason we're doing a good job for you is because we're protecting your MESA. And so they're, they're joined all the time. The union uh, was adamant in keeping MESA Health Insurance. Uh, MESA Health Insurance is owned by the MEA. Uh, MESA Health Insurance provides millions of dollars every year to the MEA. Uh, it's a great program for MEA. They make millions of dollars a year off of it. So is there a connection or is this just a conspiracy theory? In 2008, Rosemary Carey, an MEA communications consultant, denied to the biggest newspaper in Michigan any ties between the two organizations. But a quick scan of the union's financial information and it becomes clear. Millions of dollars a year flow from MESA to the MEA and the leadership team of the union sits on MESA's board. Arch Lewis is a research consultant for the MEA. He's a bit more honest about the connection. MESA, as you know, is an MEA affiliate, mm -hmm. along with uh, MEA Financial Services. Uh, and, and so the, the, it's the same relationship, I guess, between uh, uh, General Motors and what's left now? Chevy. <laughs> they're, 
they're they're a part of a, a, a larger corporation. Okay. Your critics would say that the reason that the MEA at the bargaining table def uh, fights for Mesa so much is because there is a financial interest. What would you say to that? I'd say yeah, that the well, well, first of all, no. I mean, the reality is that you, we've lost a lot of history. Uh, and, and unless you're like me, two years older than dirt, you forget that there was a period of time not long ago, uh, for, for maybe you, Cal, it's long, but for me it's not, 30 years ago, where it was very difficult for teachers to get health insurance. Times have changed, and even auto workers now have co-pays. And I can tell you from first-hand experience that the MEA has no interest in education. Their interest is their first interest is their membership. They'll do anything to protect their members. The school children, the school children are there, but they want those dues coming in. The dues that the MEA members pay to the MEA are substantial. I think they're 700 and some dollars or maybe close to $800 a year. That's what the MEA wants is the money. That's what controls everything. Money, money moves the world. This is what the MEA has to say about Mesa. The great urban legend is that somehow it costs more. Urban legend, it turns out this one is real. To give you an idea of how much of a burden health insurance is for districts right now, in the city of Wyoming, they pay $15,000 a year for every insured worker. They have 475 teachers and workers throughout the district. That's a total of $7,125,000 they pay every year just for health insurance. You know how much teachers contribute to those costs right now? Nothing. Let's make sure that they understand what the teachers have versus what they have. And people will say, well, the teachers are invaluable. I would agree with that. I I'm an instructor at Eastern Michigan University, and I think teachers are indeed invaluable. But there's a cost beyond which they can no longer be sustained. But regardless of the cost, union leaders still put the needs of adults first. I think the citizens of the state of Illinois have to make a fundamental decision. Do they want a high quality education system at a time when everyone seems to agree that a good educational system is the foundation we build a competitive economy in the global world we live in. Why would we not invest in that education? Reality doesn't match up with the rhetoric. The U.S. spends an average of $13,000 per pupil. But who's making sure that money is spent in the classroom, giving students the best education possible? Or are we simply just moving them down the line to keep the system going? In June 2010, the MEA held a rally on the steps of the Capitol, demanding lawmakers find a better way to fund education. School boards are, are okay with uh, approving contracts that they know they can't afford. I mean, we would look at the data, we would know that it was unaffordable, and they would still approve these contracts. There was absolutely no strategic plan, long-term strategic plan, on, uh, on where they hoped to go with labor costs. And in the case of most school districts, the labor, labor costs represent 87, 88, 90 percent of the cost. And so basically, you've got the school board ignoring 90 percent of their cost, or not having any sort of strategic plan on 90 percent of their costs. What people are looking for is an accountable system where money is spent in the classroom, preparing students with the skills they will need to become successful. We've got to get real. The public knows and they're not happy and they're not buying it anymore. This is one of nine films in the Kids Aren't Cars series. To see them all, go to kidsaren'tcars.com.